Well, welcome back into the studio for another Technique Tuesday. So we are going to start to cover resist techniques. So in um, this, we're going to start with five um, basic resist techniques, but there are a lot of res resist techniques. So we uh, will continue again in December with part two, where we'll go through another set of different resist techniques. Um, because there are so many and some of them are a little bit more time consuming, um, it needs to be done in two parts, but there are some wonderful techniques out there. So the, we're going to cover tape as a, t a resist, petroleum jelly, china markers, oil pastels, and glossy gel medium in this video. And the first one that we're going to review is tape. So this is a sample of something done with tape as a resist. Um, in this, I used both masking tape and painter's tape. And we're gonna kind of talk about some of the differences and, and um, nuances of having wider tape and thinner tape. And um, the different methods that you can use to add color. Now on, on this one, I simply used India ink that's been watered down and into a spray bottle. Now I didn't spray this on, I did use a brush to put this on, um, just cause I wanted to have a little bit more control. Um, but that's how this was done. I'm gonna show you the process of using tape as a resist but I'm gonna do it a little bit differently this time, but I did want you to see um, that this was done on relatively very smooth, thin paper, and it was done with the India ink. I'm gonna show you doing the same technique, but we're gonna do it on watercolor paper. Now this has more of a texture to it, but I wanted you to see the differences here but we're gonna basically do the exact same thing we did here. I'm gonna use a different medium for color um, and then our paper is slightly different. So I will come back to referencing this um, as we move forward with um, getting diving deep into resists. All right, I have my watercolor paper out. I have some of the painter's tape in the really wide I don't know, I would imagine this is an inch and a half. Um, and then I have a couple of different tape, masking tapes here, a thinner one. These two are the same thickness, but this one has more yellow to it. That doesn't matter. They're both essentially the same. Um, no, nothing fancy about it. The only thing is, is I did not try this with um, scotch tape or anything like that because I felt like to burnish it down onto the surface of this would make it challenging to get up even with the use of a blow dryer but that's something that you could take further and investigate more whatever type of tape you use you want to make sure that it will stick to the surface um, and so that it will resist so that it will resist whatever color we lay down. So I'm going to start laying down some tape. I like to cut, um, rip mine and have a jagged edge and then put the two straight edges into each other. And you wanna give it a good rub you don't want to get too aggressive about it, but you want to, you know, you want it to stick. Another thing that you can do is you can make um, a pattern. It's not going to be great pattern because you are ripping, but you could cut, if you don't mind a cut edge, you could cut it and 
then tape, put that edge, that straight edge against one side. And then these you could, could come in and add the straight edges to each other. The nice thing about having a wide tape is that it's wider and you can actually go in and create shapes. You can even, that was supposed to be a circle. <laughs> You could even go in and cut shapes out if you wanted to. Um, but those are also options. I'm just gonna fold this over just so I don't have to try and rip it. Have some items go off the edge. So that is laying down the tape. It's pretty simple. Um, that's all it really takes. Now, now we add color. So I'm just gonna go in with some Deco Art Americana paint, acrylic paint. It's not an expensive paint. Um, and I am going to use uh, just a round brush to lay this down. I might end up coming in here and spraying some water just to get some flow. I'm gonna go ahead and get this dry because I wanna come in with the sea glass, but I don't want my colors mixing. So now I'm gonna come back in and dry this. And I'm gonna get it pretty good and warm because I wanna warm that tape up because it will help to release that tape. The heat will. All right, so now that that's been dried down and this tape has been uh, requested to release easily <laughs> from the heat, we can come back in and start pulling our tape up. But so now you can really see how that resisted that paint. Now acrylic is a little thicker and heavier, but you could use uh, watercolor. Um, the interesting thing when you use 
watercolor or the India ink like I did. Um, it's more fluid and it's thinner. So sometimes it's likely to get under the tape where it did here. It got under the tape here it did. It may have pulled up a little bit, um, but that is the fun thing that can happen when you use mediums that are thinner, such as India ink that's been watered down, um, watercolor, gouache that you water down would work the same way. But this has a lot of potential and a lot of fun, you know, to use this as a resist. So that is the basic way that you use tape as a resist. All right, so the next resist that we're going to cover is the petroleum jelly resist. Now, I did this one using um, Vaseline. It doesn't matter what brand. It just needs to be petroleum jelly. I do suggest you put it in the refrigerator before you use it. Um, you don't want it too goopy. You want it a little bit more solid just so you can apply it. Um, but you do not want to freeze it. And you will need a, not a water soluble, a non water soluble um, method of applying color. Now I did this through a stencil. And um, so I am gonna show you the stencil method, but additionally, you could add um, the Vaseline just with your finger to the surface like I did here. Um, but as you can see, it's a little bit harder to tell uh, where it is. So um, it can be kind of skewed. Um, but again, on this, I use the Marabou Art Sprays, which have been discontinued. Um, but they are, um, once they dry, they're going to stay put. Um, so that's what I used here on this. Now, this is a pretty smooth paper um, and as you can see there is discoloration from the Vaseline because you do need to let everything has to dry naturally you cannot use a heat gun unless you want the Vaseline to get warm and start to pull out from wherever you placed it so if you're just doing kind of something abstracty um, and you're not necessarily using it through something where you want it to take on an image, um, that kind of thing, then by all means you can dry it, um, but just know you're going to have a bit of a mess to clean up the Vaseline, and uh, you are likely to have some um, discoloration due to the Vaseline itself. Um, so, like, it's an oil base, so, yeah. So anyways, so that's what we're um, kind of going to do today. However, instead of working on the um, slick surface like this paper is, we're going to work on watercolor paper so I can show you a bit of a difference. Although we are still going to work with a stencil um, for this because I think it's the, the method that needs to be shown. Uh, once you understand the basic principles of the process of doing the Vaseline resist, then you can make altering um, decisions and see where it takes you. You do some experimentation for yourself and what you're looking for. Um, that's the beauty of it. So I'm gonna use this little stencil on here and one of the things you really uh, want to do is you really want to hold that stencil down. So if you're so inclined to tape it, um, then you can get some tape out and tape it down just for this part where you're adding the, um, the jelly, the petroleum jelly. Okay, so we're gonna get this tape down. I will also be kind of holding it down as well when I'm work as I'm working through. And I'm just gonna use my finger 
to pull out some uh, a goop of petroleum jelly and I'm just gonna place it on the edge of my tub. So you can see this is kind of loose. It's been out of the refrigerator for a little bit here while I get set up. And, and so it is a little on the goopy side. I'm gonna go ahead and use that. Um, I'm gonna be pretty um, liberal with it and let it just fill the crevice of that space of the stencil. Just kind of rub it over and fill the space. I'm not pushing, I'm just very lightly letting it fill that space. The You want to create a resist, but you don't necessarily want it to, to pulverize it into the paper any more than it already will. Or mash it in. I just find by putting it on the edge, that's really just my kind of technique to do it, but I find by doing that, um, I can not, I can get uh, better uh, proportions on my finger that I want to work with. Now, if you go over fast, you'll see it doesn't fill in all the squares, but that's kind of fun. So I'm just going to leave those as they are. You don't want to overwork it. So I'm going to clean off my finger here. Okay, so now you're going to come in with something that's not going to move once it's dry. So I, this is an opportunity for me to use some of my gloss sprays. And again, these are going to need to dry naturally. So let me get these shaken up a little bit. I want them fully mixed in. And I'm just going to um, start to dribble this over, but I've jumped the gun. So you want to first remove the stencil before you start dribbling. So no worries. This is rescuable. Jumping the gun here. Okay, so once you've got the petroleum down, you're just gonna lift up the um, stencil. And then you're going to, not touching the surface, you're gonna go ahead and add the color, whatever it is. I am also gonna go in with water to just get that to move out a little bit. It will be kind of tricky to get it dry. You may have to let it sit overnight. That is a possibility. And just going to move that around a little bit. Okay. And then... I'm gonna go in with the ruby. That was lime. This is ruby. Now you're gonna get some color mixing and with these, possibly foam. I seem to always get the foam with the ruby. And I, again, I'm going to spray this side with some water, getting it to fan out. Maybe even tip it a little, move it around. So then what you're, you have to do is just leave it. You do not want to use a blow dryer on it. 
um, if you want it to look like the like the stencil that you used originally you don't want to um, use the um, the blow dry on it or a heat tool on it you don't want that's just going to melt and move around unless you're experimenting and that's what you're trying to see what it looks like now in terms of your stencil um, you will want to wash this with something like dawn dish soap something that as um, will take care of grease a grease fighter will work the best so i'm going to try and get this out of this pool here and place to the side um, so this can dry as well and I'm gonna go get this washed and I will be back once that's dry. It may um, take a while for that, that was very wet. So we'll see how long that takes. I'll let you know, I'll keep track of it. All right, so this didn't actually take that long to dry. Um, I would say about an hour here in Arizona. So not too bad. So when you're, now we have to pull up the Vaseline and this can be kind of goopy. Um, I usually just use some baby wipes um, and just it takes a lot to get through because it's kind of thicker and you're gonna just go in and kind of do a circular motion to get up all the Vaseline and any residual inks. As you can see there's not a lot of that. And you're just going to make your way across the whole thing. And pull up that Vaseline. And I'm going to just flip this around so my fingers aren't sitting in the Vaseline on that's left on this side. You can see some of these where I didn't get the whole square covered with the Vaseline. Uh, so the ink went in or the, and the glossy sprays went in. So something to keep in mind that when you go to add additional items to this, you might have some troubles getting them to stick down um, because that Vaseline has made a kind of a, a top coating on this card. But you can see even with the uh, additional for the different type of paper that we're working on, this being the watercolor paper, we didn't really get any uh, difference. Um, the, the most um, visible difference between these two is how well you can see the stencil and the only reason it is here is that I was trying to find with the the image that was coming through the background of this music um, I was having a hard time finding where I hadn't already put Vaseline. This was pretty uh, easy because I didn't have anything in the background obscuring my vision. Um, and these were sprayed on, whereas this was just dribbled on. Um, I think that also is a big difference as well. But now this is, you can go on and do something further with this Vaseline resist technique and move on from here. So that is a fun one. It uh, is kind of a messy one, but it can be really interesting, especially if you don't use a stencil and kind of play with it, maybe even come in and use a heat tool to see what kind of effects you can get with that. It's a great place to jump off from, but that is petroleum jelly as a resist. up is China marker. So China marker is essentially um, this peel off Sharpie substance. They come in white and black for sure. They may have other colors. They are basically a crayon. 
So it's just in, uh, it's a peel off uh, system. So as it gets low, a lot of times woodworkers use them to mark stuff. Um, I'm sure other people use them as well as mixed media people, but you can also use just regular wax crayons. So essentially it's a wax type of resist, uh, an opaque wax type of resist. So here's a sample. I did this on, again, this um, smooth paper. Um, with this one, I did it with the, uh, with this one, I did it with the alcohol spray but the alcohol actually etched its way into the china marker. So I redid it using the china marker and doing acrylic ink and um, had a lot more success with that. I just kind of sprayed water on the surface um, with my mister and then just kind of dribbled um, the acrylic ink onto the page. I did come in a little bit and spread it out a little bit on some of the edges, um, but you can see it will discolor the crayon a bit, um, but not as much as this kind of blended right in. Um, you could actually see when I sprayed the um, alcohol spray on it, this is made uh, with alcohol and alcohol inks. Um, and I'll list a link in the top right corner here of a video I have on how to make these. Um, but anyhow, you can see how it really etched in. And when it was on there, there was actually um, white pieces flaking off of the China marker. So I decided to go ahead and redo it using a different color medium in the acrylic ink. So we're gonna do it on watercolor paper. Um, it's pretty heavy weight and show you the same method. We're gonna use a different oh, method of applying color. Um, and then, um, and we're gonna use, I'm gonna use both the crayons and both of the China markers so you can see uh, the results of doing something like that. So that's what we're gonna get started on. So you could put a stencil down and kind of ink, uh, crayon, do crayon work around that stencil. I'm just gonna continue with like what I was doing before and just making um, marks. You could also come in with tape and lay crayon down around it. And actually, let's just go ahead and do that. Let's just, just for yaya's, lay the tape down and then come in here and put so we're using that tape as a resist for laying down this crayon. And I'm gonna get go in pretty heavy here around that. And then we're simply just gonna lift that up and then allow that crayon to be a resist for us um, on the front of this card. So you can come in with black on this china marker you're gonna have some fun stuff happen because this is watercolor paper has a lot of texture to it and just make some areas I'm gonna come in with the the white crayon up near where the other crayon was bit lighter with the black over on this side just so we can see the difference between heavy and the light. All right so now I'm gonna come in I'm gonna come in with this Distress Spray Stain in Seedless Preserves. 
And I'm going <clears> to <throat> first lay down a bit of water because I want to get this to move. And I'm going to let this kind of sit on the surface. Again, we cannot really dry with a heat tool because we're going to move that wax is going to melt and move. Now, if you're looking for that type of a technique, then that shouldn't be a problem. Um, you can go ahead and do that experiment. I highly recommend experimenting with your um, art supplies. I think it's a great way to discover new things that you like. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and let this dry naturally and we're going to come back and take a look at it at that point in time. Get some of the excess off here. All right, we're going to let that dry. All right, this is almost nearly dry. Something that I knew to use the uh, spray stain because I knew it was going to really soak up in to this paper and give us some fun stuff. So I'm actually going to come in with some baby wipes and wipe this down. Now, the Distress spray stains are water soluble. They're going to move. This is going to pick up some of that color. And that's part of what's so awesome about the Distress spray stains. They are so pigmented that even picking up a little bit is going to be fine. So I find a dry spot, stick my finger, and just kind of do this circular motion, pulling it away a little bit from the wax. And you can see more on the white how that's going to pop a little bit more as we clean off some of that. And you can see where it went through the spots that I did not get it covered in really well. And that's part of what's fun about the texture. And you can tell the lighter area where I did the black in light, it is, you can barely see that, but it just looks like some fun mark making. So as you can see, this uh, technique lends a lot to, uh, to play with. Whether you do it on a smooth paper and get more distinct um, markings with that um, either crayon or china marker, or if you use a more textured paper and get um, more of a um, um, abstract, more of an abstract kind of muted result. But look at that um, green greenish yellow coming popping right through that looks really nice and that's where I went in really thick around that piece of tape so you can see how you can mix the resist techniques and use them in tandem to your advantage leads for a lot of really wonderful play But that's just how I like to go over this um, and pull up some of the color and get some distinct areas that really that white is pretty nice and stark right there. Uh, a lot of fun. This is where I went over the yellow a little bit lighter. So you can really see how that can net you some a lot of fun kind of resists. So that once again is wax or china markers or crayons um, you can anything with wax that's opaque um, is considered uh, the china marker or wax um, in well i am going to be showing you another wax but it's a different type of wax so that'll be later in part two All right, <clears throat> so our next resist is oil. Um, so oil pastels, I have this set here. Uh, this is just a children's set, so that's why they're short and kind of chunky um, by Faber-Castell. And also this solid oil marker is awesome. Um, on this sample, I, you, these lines right here are this oil stick 
um, solid oil marker. And these over here are done with the oil pastel. Now these are children's oil pastels. They're not professional, so you may get a difference if you use something that is has more of an uh, oil base to it. The neat thing about this marker is um, you, I found it in orange, I think, and there's I think there's a few other colors, um, but it is made for high temperatures. And once it's down and has had an opportunity to cure, and you can speed up the cure time by using your uh, heating tool on it, and you will know that it's cured because it won't be sticky. Um, these you can actually still feel the kind of stickiness to them this is like really smooth um and so you can see the difference between um i did go over this with a baby wipe to just clean up the residual that was sitting on top of the oil medium um uh, for the color on this i use these water soluble lindy sprays so there is um a sheen to it because it's got um, that shimmer. I hope you can see that. Um, so we're going to do basically the same thing. We're going to use oil pastels and this solid marker, um, oil stick. And I'll show you how to use this. This is so much fun. Um, I use it a lot for mark making, um, when, um, I'm working um, and instead of the uh, Lindy spray this time, I'm actually going to go in with an oxide spray. Because um, this might be a fun one to, to see the oxide in. Uh, so I'm going to grab some oil pastels. I'm going to show you using the white like I did in the sample I've already showed you, but I'm also going to use this lighter pink peachy kind of color and then also this solid oil marker. Now this comes with a cap, which mine is stuck down in there and that's fine because when I put it in, it just goes into that cap. But if you, that keeps you from getting, um, uh, a crusty top to it but if you do yours does you just peel that top off and throw it away and it does twist up so you can twist it down when you're done and then put it so that that's that's the sealed um, cap so it won't get that crusty um, so basically on this watercolor we're gonna have a lot more um, uh, there's a lot more texture to it so it'll be a little bit different than the smooth surface that's something I did want you to see um, so I'm gonna just go in here and make some marks I like to get it pretty heavy I love the way this stuff and I don't know if you can see this but it is very sticky um, it is oil based I put a few dots on here, pretty heavy, using that solid oil stick. So I'm gonna go in now and I'm gonna pre-cure this. Right now it's very sticky. The only thing you do need to be aware of is that this does have a scent to it, especially when you heat it with your heat tool. Um, so if you're sensitive to smells, that's something to be aware of. So there's no stick to it anymore. And it, it cures very fast with heat. You just got to get it pretty concentrated on there. The other thing you can use is oil paint sticks. So if you um, are work with encaustics, um, they sell uh, oil paint sticks for use with uh, encaustics or if you're an um, oil painter. Okay, so I'm going to come in. I've got to tip this to see where my circles are and just go in and make some additional tiny dots. Random. And then come in with 
the white make some bigger ones again I'm pressing pretty hard with that because I am working with that texture that is on the watercolor paper Okay. So similarly how we've been going along, I am just getting that flake off of that. I'm just gonna go over this with this Mode Bond um, Distress Oxide. Actually, I'm gonna go over it with some water first. I just wanted to get it to move. You can really see uh, how the water's bubbling up around that oil stick. Give it a good spray. Let that really soak in. Get some of the excess off. I love this color. Okay, I'm gonna use my dryer on this. Okay, so you can see how it's beaded up on that oil stick and that's not gonna really dry. So I'm gonna come in with some baby wipes and just clean that up. Just gonna reactivate it and then keep on going over that until I get it all up. And this is the, this um, one right here, that is the oil pastel. And you can see how it is allowing that distress oxide to uh, uh, kind of gather on it. It's not as slick of a surface as it is from that um, solid paint stick, oil paint stick. You can definitely see the difference between the solid oils, um, oil paint marker, that's these circles right here, and the oil pastel where these circles and all the little peachy colored little dots as well. glossy gel medium that's been used through a stencil. All right, so for this, you are going to need, I'm gonna do this using stencils like I did on this one. Um, I like to use, on this, I like to get really thick um, gel medium. So I'm gonna use a pretty heavy duty um, stencil. And I'm going to use these are um wow stencils they are made out of thicker um, plastic so the depth of the area of the image um, will enable you to get it thicker real easily um, so let's get this out of the way and as always i will list uh, all the products down below so I'm going to use this TCW gel medium in gloss. I don't use glossy usually, but this, the gloss is very um, much more user friendly for a resist. You can do it with matte medium. Um, it's just harder to clean whatever you're putting on it off of it easily. Um, so I am going to use the gloss and you just need a palette knife. This is a little bit thicker than their other um, gel medium. At least that's how mine has been, the, the, every one that I've gotten. Um, okay, so I'm gonna just come over here and do stenciling just like you would with any other medium. 
There's a few here that I've tried to get where I haven't totally filled the cavity. So we can see if we get some um, fun stuff with the inks going in there or whatever I use for my color. Um, so I'm going to pull this off. And then you want to get the stencil um, into your water bath or however you clean your stencils. Because you don't want to leave this on here. It will um, make it a challenge to be used in the future. Okay, this I've dried uh, with my heat tool and it's pretty it's pretty good dry, well dried um something you can do is stamp underneath these uh this won't always necessarily be clear um sometimes what i've found with the gel medium that it is especially when you get it thicker it's more um it's less transparent, more translucent than anything. Um, but you could have stamped underneath or something, do mark making underneath, and then use this over the top. And sometimes you'll see whatever you put down below through. Similar to what we had here. In some of these areas, you can see the uh, music coming through. Other areas, it's a little bit too thick. Um, so you can't see that, but in other areas you can see that. So that's something else that you can do. Oops, <laughs> gonna take the card with me. All right, so I'm gonna come over this with some paint, but I'm gonna use this Opal Magic by Finnebear. This is not something I use a lot. I don't didn't even realize I had it. It is teal pink. So uh, I think under on black paper, it'll be one thing and on a white paper, it'll be another. So I'm not quite sure which it's going to be. I have a feeling it'll be teal on this white paper. Um, but anyways, I'm going to use this just for something different. Um, I am going to give this a good spray with some water because I want to get this moving a little bit more, be more a little, little bit more um, fluid. And I do have my round brush out, which I'm going to use to apply this and get it moving. Okay. And now I'm going to go in with some of the Paper Artsy um, Fresco Finish Paint, which is a chalk acrylic paint in Globe Thistle. And uh, again, I'm gonna get this watered down. Maybe I should have shaken that. And then come in with this. Okay, I've stopped heating it. It's not completely dry, but I want, because gel medium, is the same as acrylic paint. Um, it wants to adhere to each other. So I wanna be able to take a wipe over the top of that gel medium and kind of pull some of it off of it. Um, and so that's why I pulled the heat off at this point. It's pretty much dry. There are some areas, but see like that, it can be of interest as we pull it up where it's not dry and off the top. So we're getting some off of this one. And that's kind of the fun about using the gel medium as a resist because you don't really know exactly what you're gonna get. But there you go, you can get an idea of how, and you can see the shimmer from this uh, Opal Magic acrylic paint. And then this right here, I didn't have any um, of the gel medium on, but my paint wasn't dry, so it came up when I used the baby wipe. And that it can be of interest. If I suggest you experiment with all of these techniques, uh, be on the lookout in December. I will have the next um, Technique Tuesday part two, re resist part two. 
and these resists will be um, a little bit more lengthy. <clears throat> um, they're a little bit more um, complex, if you will. Not all of them, a few of them are, and so they take a little bit more time. So that's why I did wanna be able to go over a good deal of the resist techniques out there. So it just ended up being a little bit longer, two part, two parter. All right, well, thank you so much for uh, coming over here and checking it out, seeing what I have going on here on YouTube. If you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or just want to comment, please do so below. And uh, as always, I will have all the products I've used listed down uh, below in the description box.